We are living in a time where if you want a license, you have to. Even if you are good, they will fail you. Ah, uh, you get what I'm saying? But how do you beat this system? You can beat it through divine. That's what you need to pray. That's what you need to pray for. Divine? All right. When you look in the Bible, you find that I'll just give you like a few names. I'm looking at a few names. So divine connection, maybe let me describe it a little bit. Divine connection is a person that God in his creation with a person uh, it's a person that God has put from the foundation of the earth to help you in something. You see, spiritually I may be your divine connection. Whereby, you might have been everywhere else. Hello? Maybe let me describe it this way. There is what we call your voice in the spiritual thing. Your? For Jesus, John the Baptist was his that's why he says, I'm the voice in that. Now, Jesus met a lot of people, met before he met John the Baptist. But heaven did not open. But the moment he met John the Baptist, heaven opened and the voice said, huh? this is in whom I'm well. When you meet your voice or your divine connection, heavens open. And the God speaks. And the Holy Ghost even came down on him. You need divine connection. As a child of God, this is one thing that you need to start praying for in your life. That God, connect me to my divine. The divine connections are passive. They are what? They are only activated when you need them. But some of us, what the devil has done is that some of you have even fought your divine connection before he is even activated. The Bible talks about Paul. Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Barnabas. They had the big fight. And Silas defended who? Barnabas. Timothy defended Paul, and the Bible said they went different ways. But if you read the Bible later on, Paul says, please, Bring my son, who? Silas. He says, of whom I can't do anything if he's not here. Now, listen. Paul later on, Silas was his divine connection. That he couldn't do certain things if Silas is not there. And yet, they fought and Silas fought Paul and they defended Barnabas and they split. And we don't hear about Barnabas after that. I get what I'm saying. So in other words, the devil can locate who is your divine connection. And a lot of people that actually have been here and they have left, they don't know that actually was their divine connection to their answer. But before the time comes, the devil saw and he moved them away. Listen, once you meet your voice, heaven opens. Once you meet your voice or your divine connection, heavens opens. As for Paul, his divine connection was Barnabas. His connection was Barnabas. Acts chapter 9 verse 5. And 12 to 12 to 17 and maybe verse 26 there. So what we see Acts chapter chapter 9. So what we see, why am I saying Paul his divine connection was Barnabas. When Paul was a gangster, when Paul was, I will call him a gangster because he was killing people. When Paul was what? He was a bad gangster. And what happened is that now nobody wanted him. And when the Lord saved him, he needed his divine connection to connect him to the church. And the one God used was, you see, your divine connection, everybody wants to believe you. But your divine connection will? If your interviewer is your divine connection, everyone may not believe, but that person will believe in you. Amen. And their duty is just to lift you up. A divine connection or a divine 
connection is somebody that will take you from one place to another. I get to say one place to? In short, what I'm saying is your divine connection, you don't need to bribe them. You don't need to. Sometimes you even say, hey, can I give you something? He says, hey, no, I'm busy right now. Please, I'm gone. Enjoy. You find that the way they are hard to open to you will be totally different. That's why you don't need to bribe. All you need to do is pray for the divine. Say, God, help me. That's why the Bible said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Huh? I preached last time. I'm going to still preach about divine alignment. Divine? Alignment. Divine what? Alignment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach all the divine alignment, divine connection, divine this, divine that. Amen. Maybe five messages. Amen. Because divine alignment, I told you last time, that when Jesus needed the money, he knew that it was in a fish. And the fish was in a particular sea or river. And he told Peter, Peter go to this sea and throw there. And the first fish you catch, open its mouth, the money is there for two of us. And I said last time that God couldn't even trust people on the earth to give them that money, to keep it for Jesus. He says, ah, they will eat it. They eat seed and they harvest. <laughs> He bypassed the earth where there are moors. He bypassed what? Yes. Where there are moors. You know, more shopping complex. And he went to give the money to the fish where there are no shops. Because he can't trust the one. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. So now, what I said, divine alignment, is that the fish has to be the right fish. Wherever it was, it had to travel to that specific spot where Peter would go. While Peter is moving, the fish also is moving. Because, and God had to move all other fishes. Or they had to be late that day. And that fish had to be the first one to catch. Because it's the one which had the money. It's the same thing. God has to align your blessing. He says it shall level. He shall level valleys and crooked places. Meaning, he has to make them straight so that you can just be walking and picking your, your blessing. I get what I'm saying. It's a spiritual thing. Jesus, if he needed a donkey, he knew exactly where the donkey was. Now, I don't want to go to that message. Are you getting what I'm saying? I say he knew where the donkey was. He even knew. He says, when the man asks you, even he knew it's not used. When the man asks you, tell him that. The master says one, he even told them the exact word. You need divine alignment. The Bible says when you shall appear before the court or whatever, don't worry what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit shall. Some of you, when, before you go interview, ask the Holy Spirit to align your words. Because the Bible says before a thought comes into you, you already know it. Because some of you, you're going to say words that the person who is not interviewing you doesn't like to hear. And you become offended and fail you. Or the Holy Ghost can give you the words. That the person likes to hear. And they'll give you the job. He has to align everything. But let's talk about divine connection today. Divine? Uh -huh. I'm going to teach you things. Don't worry. I'm going to teach you stuff that when they activate it, ah, you, your life is changed. Amen. So divine connection, Paul, like I said, he was a gangster. He was Acts 9, chapter, chapter 9, right? Acts chapter 9, verse 5. All right, all right, quickly. No time is against me. Acts 9, verse 5. Mm. Glory be to God. Ah, 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 ah. Jesus is good. Verse 5, the Bible says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay? But when you go down, let's look at maybe 26. The Bible says, and verse 26, And when Saul was to come to Jerusalem, he allowed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was he. 
a disciple. They believed not that he was what? Verse 27. But Barnabas took him. Barnabas and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. In other words, the church didn't want to do anything with the poor. They say he's a gangster. He's going to kill us. He's trying to trick us. But God had to put a divine connection by the name of Barnabas was a man that took Paul from being rejected to being accepted. When Barnabas introduced him, everybody accepted Paul. Barnabas was a divine connection. He didn't have to explain to Barnabas how he was saved. It was somebody that God had put already there. That when Paul faces this problem, I'm going to use this divine connection so that I can be able to clear this issue. So there is a person, even in business, there is a person that if you pray that God show me my divine connection, that person when he comes, ah, they'll believe everything you say. Everyone else won't believe you, but that person what? I activate your divine connection. I activate your divine connection in the name of Jesus. As for Peter, now I may not read every scripture, but I'm going to tell you. As for Peter, it was Cornelius. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 7. And when you look at also verse 19, now when you see Cornelius, for him to receive salvation in this house, his divine spiritual divine connection was Peter. Even the angel did not preach the gospel to Cornelius. He just delivered the message. Go and ask Peter to send for Peter. He should come. So in other words, for Cornelius to receive salvation, he needed Peter as his divine connection. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hello? So we see that Paul, Paul and Lydia in Acts chapter 16 verse 13 to uh, 15, I'll tell you, but Lydia was a divine connection for Paul's provision. The Bible says Lydia one day went to the river. You know, Paul went to the river, they went to pray, right? They went where? To do what? Maybe let me read it. I won't read the others, but because I'm close. Glory be to God. I say Acts 16, verse 13. The Bible says, And on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was want to be made and we sat down and spoke unto the woman which restored Dida and a certain woman named Lydia a seller of purple and of the city of Tiatila which worshiped God heard us whose heart the Lord opened whose heart the Lord that she attended unto all the things which were spoken of Paul and when she was baptized and her household she bestowed us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. In other words, she provided for us. Paul one day went to the river, praying, not thinking. God was about to send a divine connection for his needs to be provided for. You may be my divine connection for the TV. I may be your divine connection to your spiritual door. I get what I'm saying? The Bible says, Paul, they went to pray. But as they were there, Lydia also went. And she was listening. She said, hey, I mean, these are men of God. And she she says, whatever happened, I read, she says, "Ah, if you consider me as a woman that fears God, why don't come in my house? And she says, when they went there, she provided for them. Meaning not one day, they started staying there to do the mission in that area. Anywhere you go for your needs, you must always pray God to give you divine. There is a person that God has opened their hearts for what he sends you for. Whether it's a business or job or ministry, there will always be a person that God will send. You see, you have to understand this secret if you have to be successful. You don't have to blind the divine connection. The heart is always open. Are you with me? 
Priscilla Aquila and Apollos. We see that Priscilla and Aquila was the mentorship. For mentorship, you know, Apollos was a zealous man. But Aquila and Priscilla, they were very acquainted. So Apollos, uh, is the Apollos, yeah, was very, very, very good in explaining the, maybe the gospel, but he was teaching about John the Baptist's gospel. These people taught him, Acts chapter 17, verse 24 to 26, they taught him the gospel of Jesus. So they were his what? Divine? Paul and Timothy, First Timothy, uh, chapter, one, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, mentorship also. We see that Paul was a mentor of Timothy. Divine connection. I get what I'm saying? Paul and Timothy, like I've said, Philip and the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian eunuchy, for the Ethiopian eunuchy to know the, the, the God he was trying to search about. He was rich. He was a treasurer of the kingdom of Ethiopia. But he was reading, searching the truth. His divine connection was who? Philip. There is always a divine connection. Always? Divine. Moses and Joshua. Moses and? Joshua, Joshua saved Moses. Joshua? Seven. Numbers 11 verse 28. I'm not going to read because of time. Joshua saved? Moses. But we see that because Joshua saved Moses, we see that God one day he says, Moses, I've prepared prepare 70 or 72 elders. 70, right? 70 elders. And they started prophesying like who? Moses. The spirit of God came upon them. But you see, when God came to choose who should succeed Moses, he never went for the 70. Because they were thinking they are elders. They were not saving. The Bible, whoever saves the man of God receives their anointing. That's a secret. Timothy saved Paul. That's why he received the anointing. God did not go for the 70. He went for Joshua. Who was he pulling water? The one who was carrying the bag for Elisha is the one who gave the anointing. Anointing transfers through service also. I get what I'm saying? Amen. Elisha and Elijah. 1 Kings 19.21. The Bible says Elisha ministered to Elijah. So where did the anointing go to? Remember, there were sons of the prophets, huh? The sons of the prophets were mocking Elisha to say, oh, your master is going to be taken today. They even knew that the anointing won't go to them because they were not saving Elijah. Elisha was saving Elijah. is the one who received that. That's how God blesses Jesus and the apostles. First, uh, John chapter 1, 43 and 49. So we see that uh, when Jesus needed the court or the room, you know the donkey to ride on, or the room to do his Passover, he already had also divine connection. It was the people that had built that double story or whatever, so that he can have easy. So those were his divine connection for his provision. I get what I'm saying? So you need to ask God. I've already talked about Peter, the big fish, Jesus and the big fish. Huh? Are you the big fish? Are you the big fish? We should take coins out of you. Uh -uh. Some of you are saying, no, 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 you have to be the big fish. You have to say, Lord, I want a big fish anointing. So when Jesus wants money, I should give. I just told you that God bypassed people and gave the fish. It means he trusted the fish more. Even Jesus, when he multiplied bread and fish, who did he give to? People or his disciples? His disciples. Because he trusts them to distribute. He gave them to distribute. So you need to be the big fish so he can give you to distribute. He has to trust you. Receive it. I say receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So what am I trying to say is that uh, you need to have divine connection. You need to have I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. Receive your divine connection.